For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Eboku. There is a glory that is reserved for us that Peter talks about. It's reserved for us. It's undefiled. It's a glory that can never spoil. It's not money that there's going to be recession. It's not the type of thing that, you know, you can lose. It's not the type of thing that can spoil. It's not the type of thing, you know, it, it, it's a glory that we don't even know what it is like yet. It is the promise that Jesus, that God has promised us. It is the ultimate promise of the Christian. This is what Ephesians 1 is talking about. It says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, you will know what the hope of his calling is. You will know what the riches of his glory towards us. So it is God's will that we begin to open our eyes to a glory that is beyond us. Now, as I speak, I recognize that it will take faith to come by hearing. Bible says, for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we have not been hearing this word, we are going to wonder, what, what is this man talking about? As I try to share this sometimes, some people, it seems so laughable to some. But this is the whole essence. This is the, the hope Bible says that, let me read Colossians for you. Colossians 1, I want to read from verse 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Now listen to this. And be not moved away from what? The hope of of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul am made a minister so you need to understand this gospel that we preach is about a hope this generation is largely not preaching that hope you cannot have I mean what are you pursuing if you do not know the hope that you are pursuing, you cannot run a race successfully when you do not know what you are going to breast, where the tape is, or what it is about. Just imagine you didn't know that you were running an 800-meter race. But you, in your mind, you don't know what it is, but you just assumed it was a 100 meters race. So guess what? There may be some other people who knew what it was. So you started. And they were running at a slower pace. Now you thought that, hey, these guys are slow. Then you put all your energy and your power and ran 100 meters. Gosh, and you breast the tape. And you feel it and then you fell down. They were still running. And you are laughing at them. What are they doing? You know why? Because you didn't know what the hope was. This is a danger for our generation. When you don't know what the hope was, you can't run the right race. When you are supposed to be, you know why? Because, because you don't know what the hope was, you will not be paying the right price that needs you to get the right result and breast the right tape. Rather than doing a gentle marathon race, you are going to be doing a, a sprint and running and wear yourself out and before you realize you're gone. Paul talks about people. He says, cast away. 
the hope he says he says here he says if you continue in the faith grounded so many of us are not grounded if you continue in the faith settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard which is preached to every creature now let's go to 26 or 25 it says, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles, even Christ in you the hope of glory whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in jesus christ so the gospel brought christ to us the image of god and the gospel brought christ so that we be conformed to that image that image will produce a glory in our lives that glory will cover us. It will clothe us like Adam was clothed in the garden. It's a glory of dominion. Adam did not go out to name birds and animals. Do you know that? Without the glory of God. It was because of the glory. What is the glory? I want you to picture a king. A king who has a regalia. He has a signet. A, a ring. He has a, a scepter. These are the things that make of glory. Do you know that every king has his own signet, has his own type of crown, has his own ring, and everything? And I'm sure some of you would have seen some of these movies where something happened to somebody, and maybe the king gave his ring or something that belonged to him, and somebody else saw it, and immediately they began to worship, or, wow, yeah, that belongs to the king, because they knew that that belonged to that king, and that king is so powerful. The glory speaks of your, your status. It's a spiritual status. And that's what Jesus has always been talking about. That status that I had with you before the foundation of the world, seated with God at the right hand of the Father, that Godship, that almightiness that I had with you. There is a glory for you that has been resolved, reserved. You cannot be thinking. We cannot, the church cannot be being built on a glory that the Gentiles are pursuing. It just is not the gospel. The gospel is not about the glories of this world. There is no amount of cars. There's no amount of houses. What are you going to do with all the money in this world? The Bible calls it the deceitfulness of riches. What are you going to do with all the money in this world? Buy houses. In that case, some of the richest people like the Bill Gates of this world, they have the highest glory. That means they have the, they have the thing that many of us Christians are looking for. So Bill Gates and people like him that have billions of dollars, they just need to dash us some. They can actually be God for some people. Because they can make you. They can make you. For those of us who think that, you know, the, the inheritance for us is, is, is in this life, then you don't need God. You just need some of these very wealthy, stupendously wealthy people. Let them just be dashing you two, two million, five, five million dollars. They make you, and so they are God for you. The glory that has been reserved for us is incorruptible. The inheritance that has been reserved for us is beyond our imagination. God wants you to work hard for it. God wants you to pay a price in holiness, and he wants to pay, pay a price in laboring for the gospel to go around the world so that people know about this glory. Oh God, help us. He says, the, the, the mystery which has been hidden from the time past is Christ in you. It is the hope of glory. So,
so this glory is the hope. This glory, this, this, this majesty, this status. There is something beyond this life that only true saints of God, only true children of God, people who have walked with God like Paul talked about, there is a crown of glory laid up for me by the Lord of glory himself. There is, there, is, there is a weight of glory that we are to increase in. That, 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 that this world, this world can not nearly offer us. There is nothing in this world. Demas, he has loved this present world. Love not this world or the things that are in this world. The things that are in this world. And that's what Jesus meant when he was talking to Pontius Pilate. Did I read that scripture? Yeah. He said to Pontius Pilate, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. Now, if Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, why are we trying to make this kingdom our world? Why are we feeling that if, if Jesus wanted to make this earth his world, he said, if it were of this world, I'd have simply called my angels in another scripture, and they will just bring 12 legions of angels and will destroy all of you. He said, but my kingdom is not of this world. This, is not the, this world is not where, it's not our home. It's not our, it's not our, our benefit. It's not our inheritance. Every time the church, God help me. Let me say it this way. I have a dream. A dream of a church of people who have set their affections of things above. I dream of a people who are not interested in this world, but they are in the world, but they are not of the world. I dream of a people who have seen this world for what it is, a fading world, a world that is dying and reserved for judgment. I dream of a people who see what God has said, that there is a hope that is laid for us. It's a hope in eternity it's a glory it's 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 a it's a configuration of such majesty it's 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 a status it's a status beyond our wildest comprehension let me ask you what is the biggest gentile or christian looking for on this earth honor pride of this life what's the pride of this life what's the pride of this life the pride of this life, you know, things. I have 10 cars. When I go to a place, I wear Gianni Loigo suits. Whoever that is. It's a mockery of what is going to happen in eternity. Satan is fooling people. I wear $500 shoes. And then I go out for parties and a chauffeur opens the door for me and salutes me. Then I step out. I wave. They help. How are you? And they say, big boy. Big girl. That's the end of your glory. Any other thing again? Is that the whole thing we are working for? (laughs) I'm trying to understand. Listen, I, I'm trying to understand. What are we looking for? Then you go home. I looked at one of the superstars of the world the other day. Without having to mention name. I saw his bed when they say he died. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a golden bed. Even if. It just wood. Another long. And it even looked ugly. didn't sleep on two beds. Do you know that some of us sleep better than some of the richest people in the world? I asked my wife the other day. I said, you know this man, I won't mention any name. They say he's worth over $50 billion. He's not happier than I am. He's not more fulfilled. I will not exchange my life now for his own, even on this earth. I'm not even talking about let's get to eternity. 
Some of them will be begging us to drop water in their mouth when they are burning in hell. I'm talking of even in this life. With all the money that they have amassed and all the great houses. But guess what? You are supposed to, when you have Christ, when you have that hope, then you will know why Paul says, I was beaten 39 times. Then you will know why Paul, he, he's fighting for something that the church doesn't know about yet. That's, you see, because when you know this hope of this glory that has been laid for us, your fight changes. It is because we don't know this hope. That is why we are playing the games we are playing. And you know what I call it? It's the Herodic conspiracy. It is the conspiracy that Herod has. Herod tells the wise men, he said, please, please make sure when you see this king that is born, come and tell me. You know why? He wants to kill him. So because of that, they didn't return. He kills all the little children below two years. But thank God, God had warned Joseph in a dream, take the child to Egypt. So, so you, you can see what is happening now. You have Satan, who knows that there is a glory that's reserved for you. There is a glory beyond this world. So you know what he's done? He has come into the church and offered the church glory. Come and take. So the church now, if you are a powerful pastor now, you know how to help people get the glory of the world. If you are a powerful Christian, you know how to pursue the glory you are enjoying and people are even envying you. Many in the church. All this has to change. You see, this is why my heart is burdened because it's, it's, it's beyond just we say, oh, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. When you know this hope, you cannot live as you are living Nobody will tell you that you need to start interceding for the lost souls. You will be shipwrecked. You, you, you will be happy. You, let's, let me tell you, when, if Jesus tells you, put down your life, you will be so happy. Do you understand? But listen, it is because of this hope of glory, it's going to drive you. You will not love your life unto death anymore. You're going to see the need for why. You, you have to win souls and prevent people from the calamity of eternal destruction you're going to see the reason why jesus left his glory came down to die so that he can seek and save the lost you too you will be recruited into that business you're going to see why bible says jesus said i have glorified you you will see why you have to glorify him you will see why holiness is paramount because holiness is the secret to increasing in glory in god Holiness is the secret to making the weight of your glory more. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like thee? That's Exodus 15, 11. He says you are what? Glorious in holiness is the glory of God. Do you know why? Holiness is the nature of God. God's nature is holiness. Obedience is not holiness. Obedience leads to holiness. The whole essence is, see, God is holy. He's not more holy than he is. It is us who need obedience. God doesn't work in obedience. God is God. And he already has a nature called holiness. Now, Jesus brought his gospel, and as we obey his gospel, his gospel, obedience to his gospel, helps us to live the holy life of God. The gospel is all about us living the holy life of God. And it gives us the instructions. It's, it's like a manual that tells us how to operate the holy life. And obedience to the gospel helps us to appropriate that manual. To push the right buttons that will make us live like him. And as we practice that life here on earth. This life on earth is a dress rehearsal. It's like a rehearsal. It's like a preparation for a big examination or, or, or a big a promotion that we're about to enjoy. If you have not been perfecting holiness, if you have not been learning to walk in the holiness of God, you are going to find out that you are going to find yourself stranded. There is glory ahead of us, people of God. I don't know how I'm going to say, if I, it's so weighty in my spirit that my, my lips are betraying me. The, the, 
The church has to have a new view, a new outlook, a new paradigm, a new way of thinking. We cannot allow ourselves anymore to be deceived, to be fooled. We cannot. The other day, I was praying. And I found myself praying for somebody. I don't even know who. It's not somebody. I, I didn't see anybody's face. But it's for, I, I, I saw a couple who were married. And um, they said they're getting a divorce. So they separated. And they started fighting with each other. They can't stand each other and so on and so forth. And the next thing was I heard one of them say, because it's, they were praying to God. God showed me the prayer. That's where it comes from. I pray what I'm saying makes sense. Now, God showed me the prayer. Uh, and I saw the prayer, and I heard one of them say, it's because of the children I'm going to come back. Because I love the children so much, and I don't want them to be scattered. And God told me, son, you have work to do. I said, yes. He said, you see, this is what is happening in my church. You can hear that mother because of the children not even because of my will they are ready to do things that all those prayers he said he will use them on judgment day in the heart of these parents they feel they've done a great thing okay let's come back together because we don't want the children to suffer he said but don't forget i've sent jesus as an example and jesus even though he knew he would be beaten and killed in the most horrible way he said, not my will, but thy will be done. He said, your generation is teaching people how to be comfortable even against my will. So now we are serving people with a doctrine, with a message. Okay, if you are not happy, if it will not make you happy, yeah, you can go and divorce. If it will not make you happy, you can live as you like. We just want you to be happy. God is, loves you and God loves you. God's will is more important to him than anything, than, than your children. He prefers for you to go back to your husband or your wife. He prefers for you to leave that job that is causing you to sin and, and, and be, be hungry if need be. And suffer a little bit if need be. He prefers for you to do that than to do it because of one less reason. And to do these things because of anything else but his will. Is God's will paramount to our generation? Is God's will paramount? Is it, is it the ultimate? Because God said. That's where we're getting to. That's holiness. The church can no more trivialize God's will. Because holiness is thy will be done on earth as it is being done in heaven. The angels of God are called holy because they are part of that vision. They are doing his will in heaven. Now, the church of God is supposed to be holy. I'm a part of the same vision that the angels are doing his will on earth as it is being done in heaven. Are you perfecting holiness? Is the glory of God increasing in your life? Like the gentleman who shared this morning. I am telling you that, you see, <laughs> there is a work we have to do. That's beyond what this life has to offer. And we must carry our cross and follow him. So, I want to tell you, however, all these things, they mean nothing to me. They mean nothing to me. I, I'm working out my salvation. I am building the weight of glory. One of these days, remember that I told you. I'll be begging people, I, I, all these things that the world is looking for. There'll be so much that I won't even need them. I just... As it's coming, they're channeling it somewhere else. Glory does that for you. If you master glory by perfecting holiness, the glory of God is a dominating force. The glory of God, for God is a force that produces the dominance of God, the majesty of God. And that's what Satan is trying to cut off the church from. Don't get the glory of God. Pursue principles Pursue logic, pursue scriptural principles if need be that have no foundation in sanctification and, 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 and you do well. I teach you how to plan. I teach you to do this. I teach you to do that. Go and conform to the image of God. What is happening in your life now? Where are the areas in your life 
where there are potholes. Where there are serious holes. Are you working in an office and you are stealing money? Stop it. Get out of that place because of God. If you cannot, get out. Listen, get out if you cannot. Are you involved with somebody, a man or a woman, who is not your husband or who is not your wife? Get out before it's too late. Abhor that which is evil. You see, instructions in righteousness will teach us how to practice holiness. Flee from all appearances of evil. It works. It works. It works. As a rule, for me, those of us that have DSTV, we do not watch in my home. My wife doesn't allow my children to watch certain cartoons and certain movies. Anything that she feels is corrupting influence to them. I myself, I guard my own salvation. I do not watch movies. I really do. Now, don't misunderstand. That means I have not watched movies. I have watched movies. A, a, a while back, I made up my mind to perfect holiness. I don't let my eyes to see anything that is not supposed to see. I watch my history channel and I'm enjoying it. Yesterday I called my wife. Come and see one of my shows. Undercover boss. Some boss who goes undercover and pretends to be a staff and so on. And those are the type of things I'm enjoying now. Planet, animal planet. And they are so interesting. Don't allow Hollywood fool you and lead you to hell. Yes. Before you realize, you are allowing some evil conglomerate. They're going to start feeding you with lustful thoughts. Anything that is going to feed you with lust and fill you with anything that corrupts the life of God inside of you. He says, I carry the dying of, of, of the Lord daily in my body so that the life of Jesus can flow through me. That's how to build the glory of God. And guess what? I am building an oil of gladness in my life. I am building what they know in a light mode. They call the anointing. I'm building a personal anointing. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that he can ask or think through the power that works in us. Because I'm following his instructions. His instructions told me, abhor that which is evil. Flee from all appearances of evil. Does that remind you of Joseph? Can you see the glory that Joseph built for himself and the results of that glory? He says, I cannot do this wickedness against God. Every time we are operating in sin, it's a wickedness against God. Thank you for watching This Awakened Generation. We trust you've been inspired by this message. Tune in again to this channel at the same time to hear the heartbeats of God. Please send your testimonies, suggestions or inquiries to testify at tbrchurch.org or info at tbrchurch.org. We would love to host you this Sunday by 9 a.m. Visit our website or contact us on the following numbers. Jesus is coming soon, so stay rapturable.